give you the stepwise procedure for that. Okay. So in step one, what we have to do is we have to determine the ground state. In step one, we want to determine the ground state. So ground state means A acting on phi naught of Y equal to zero. And A is basically chosen as now W of Y is Y. W of Y is Y. So Y plus D by D Y. That is A. Right? So Y plus D by D Y acting on phi naught of Y equal to zero. So that will give us D phi naught by D Y equal to minus phi naught times Y. And so we can immediately see that phi naught is nothing but exponential minus y squared upon 2. It's some constant obviously. Okay. The integration constant. So that can be found by normalizing phi naught. Okay. So what we find is a times phi naught is this. So phi naught is basically this. We got our ground state. We got our ground state. Now, same time, you can see that A dagger acting on some other psi naught of Y equal to 0. What does it give us? It is Y minus D by DY acting on, let us say, psi naught of Y equal to 0. So, this gives us D psi naught by DY equal to plus Y times psi naught. So, that means psi naught of y will be exponential plus y squared upon 2 with some constant normalization constant okay so you can see here this is uh, you know going down to 0 as y tends to plus minus infinity very rapidly but this will build up as y tends to plus or minus uh, infinity this will keep on building up so this is not a normalizable wave function and hence it is not acceptable. Now once we got the ground state, we will see how is it related to the harmonic oscillator that is step 2. Now we know that H1 acting on phi naught of y. H1 is basically A dagger A acting on phi naught of y equal to 0. But H1 is basically H harmonic oscillator minus 1. So acting on phi naught of y equal to 0. So that means H harmonic oscillator acting on phi naught of y is equal to 1 times phi naught of y. So phi naught of y is basically the eigenfunction of the harmonic oscillator with eigenvalue beta equal to 1. So beta equal to 1 implies beta is basically 2e upon h cross omega and this particular beta equal to 1 corresponds to the ground state so e naught equal to 1 that is e naught equal to half h cross omega so that gives us the ground state now once we obtain the ground state we know that you know every eigenfunction of h1 is also an eigenfunction of h2 right h2 is equal to h1 plus 2 so h2 minus 2 h2 minus 2 times phi naught y equal to 0 so that means we have here h2 acting on phi naught to be equal to 2 times phi naught so we see that phi naught is an eigenfunction of h2 with an eigenvalue 2 okay and uh, so from this what we can do is we can obtain the next uh, higher state because we can write h2 as uh, a a dagger acting on phi naught equal to 2 times phi naught so if you remember we can act upon this from both sides using a dagger and then you can see that this particular thing here is a new wave function and a dagger a is h1 so h1 acting on let's call this state as 
phi 1 a dagger acting on phi naught as phi 1 equal to 2 times phi 1 okay so that is the basic idea so we got a dagger phi naught yes phi 1 so phi 1 is basically a dagger like y minus d by dy acting on phi naught phi naught is some constant times exponential minus y squared upon 2 so we can easily determine the wave function also so the wave function will be y exponential minus y squared by 2 minus d by dy of exponential minus y squared by 2 so exponential minus square y squared by 2 will give minus half so that will become plus half and then we have uh, integration of uh, uh, differentiation of uh, y squared which will give us 2y into exponential minus y squared by 2 so this goes away so basically what we got is y into y and y so 2y 2y exponential minus y squared by 2 of course some co normalization constant will be there okay so now so we know phi 1 now what is h1 h1 is h harmonic oscillator minus 1 acting on phi 1 gives you 2 times phi 1 and so we can immediately see that h harmonic oscillator acting on phi 1 of y which is here already is equal to 2 phi 1 plus phi 1 that is 3 times phi 1 of y so what is beta beta is equal to 3 so beta equal to 2e upon h cross omega is equal to 3 where e is the ground state uh, first excited state because this this should correspond to e1 okay beta equal to 3 should correspond to e1 so e1 will come out to be 3 by 2 h cross omega or we can write it as 1 plus half h cross omega that is we continued to obtain the next uh, uh, eigenstate as well so that is our step 3 so step 3 what we do is basically we try to extend this procedure to that is we start with phi 1 now and uh, again act with a dagger to obtain phi 2 okay so phi 2 will be a dagger acting on phi 1 a dagger is basically uh, a dagger is y minus d by dy y minus d by dy acting on 2y exponential minus y squared upon 2 so that will give us y into y so 2y squared exponential minus y squared by 2 and minus 2 2y squared exponential minus y squared by 2 then minus 2 times d by d of d by dy of y will give you 1 so exponential minus y squared by 2 and then keep y as it is and differentiate exponential minus y squared by 2 with respect to dy so that will give you minus 2y upon 2 into exponential minus y squared by 2 so that will give us so this 2 2 goes away so minus y squared minus or minus plus 2 y squared so you get 4 y squared exponential minus y squared by 2 minus 2 times exponential minus y squared by 2 so this is basically minus 2 plus 4 y squared into exponential minus y squared by 2 so we got phi 2 and phi 2 is a dagger phi 1 we know that h2 is equal to h2 is equal to h1 plus 2 right so if you substitute here h1 equal to h2 minus 2 so what we will see is h2 times phi 1 will be equal to 4 times phi 1 h2 times 4 phi 1 equal to 4 times phi 1 and so now what we have to do is again same thing h2 we can write it as a a dagger phi 1 equal to 4 phi 1 operate with an a dagger from here from left 
So we get A dagger A which will give you H1 acting on A dagger phi 1 equal to 4 times A dagger phi 1 and so that immediately tells you that A dagger phi 1 is phi 2 which we have uh, arrived at here. So H1 acting on phi 2 will actually give you 4 times phi 2. So H1 acting on phi 1 gave you 2 times phi 1. H1 acting on phi 2 gave you 4 times. So basically uh, as you go to higher states you keep getting an increment of 2 here. But then harmonic oscillator minus 1 acting on phi 2 equal to 4 phi 2. That means harmonic oscillators wave function phi 2 will have beta. So beta is going from 3 to phi. Okay. So that is what is the idea. So beta becomes equal to phi. So beta is now 2 e2 because that is the second energy eigenvalue divided by h cross omega equal to phi. So that gives you e2 equal to 5 by 2 h cross omega which we can write as 2 plus half h cross omega. So if we extend this procedure continuously then we get the energy eigenvalues for the nth state. For the nth state we get the energy eigenvalues as En equal to n plus half h cross omega. And correspondingly we will also get uh, phi n of y. Okay, Phi n of y will be having some constant cn which is a normalization constant and what we will notice is these are nothing but the hermite polynomials so they are substituted as hn of y into exponential minus y squared upon 2 so these are the corresponding wave functions and one can always uh, substitute back in terms of x to get uh, phi n of x or psi n of x whatever you want to call it as some normalization constant times hn. So wherever y is there you have to substitute back as root of m omega by h cross times x. So exponential minus m omega by 2h cross times x squared. So this is the simple way in which we can obtain the energy eigenvalues and corresponding eigenfunctions for the harmonic oscillator problem using the SUSI technique.